Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to introduce the basics of vector fields to you in this video. Vector fields can be used all over the sciences in the flow of winds and fluids, in electric fields that are generated around particles that have an electrical charge, gravitational fields, uh, in how objects with mass affect other objects, and also in magnetic fields where we can see the effects of charges in motion. If we just look at one of these examples of gravitational field, where force is acting in a particular direction toward a point, the magnitude of the force is also stronger near the point. So you can think about if there's some sort of a planet or a really dense object right here, if I'm far away, I will be pulled toward that point, but not very quickly. And the closer I am to that object, the more strong the pull will be toward that point. Also in weather patterns, like tropical storms, we have a rotational pattern. We don't have very strong winds very far out, but then as we get closer and closer toward the center, we get a greater magnitude of force that's swirling about, and then maybe in the center we have an eye of less magnitude. The basic way to think about vector fields, they're like cornfields. In a cornfield, you have corn everywhere, and in vector fields, you have a vector everywhere. Now we will plot some of the vectors. We can't plot a vector at every point because there'd be so many vectors lying on top of one another, you wouldn't be able to see the direction or the magnitude of any of them. So we plot several vectors enough to get the idea of the patterns of direction and magnitude of flow in each field. More formally in mathematics, we'll say that a vector field, capital F, is a function. It assigns a vector to each point in some region of n-dimensional space. So for example, in two-dimensional space, then we'll assign a vector that looks like m comma n to each point in space. In three-dimensional space, we'll assign a vector that looks like m comma n comma p, these different components in three-dimensional space. So m in each of these is going to be our x component n in each is going to be our y component, and then in three-dimensional space we'll need an additional z component for our vector field. Just looking at a couple basic examples more mathematically, in two-dimensional space, here's my vector field 0, 0. It looks like I don't have any vectors, but that's actually because each vector has no magnitude and no direction, right? If I have a vector 0, 0 at each point, that has no magnitude, it has no direction. So we can imagine this vector field describing a still body of water that has no flow to it. If you think about this field where my vector field is 2 comma 1 in two-dimensional space, you can see it assigns the vector 2 comma 1 to every single point in two-dimensional space. So here, the magnitude and the direction is the same at every point because we have the same vector 2 comma 1 at every point. This would describe water perhaps where everything is flowing at the same rate and in the same direction at every point. Just getting familiar with a couple kinds of vector fields. So a vector field is called a radial field if all the vectors in the field point directly toward or away from the origin. You can see here I have my 2D vector field x comma y. So the formula for each vector is the x coordinate comma the y coordinate. And if you see here this picture, this is a radial vector field because all of the vectors are pointing away from the origin in this field. If you want to imagine a physical phenomenon that might represent this sort of, so if you imagine we have some sort of paraboloid where I have a max at the top here, think about water that is running off of this paraboloid, in other words down a hill, might be represented by this type of field. So you imagine if we're right on the top we're not going to really have any flow, but if I'm just a little bit off of the top, I'm going to start flowing slowly off to the side, and as I get further down, because the slope gets greater, then I would have a greater magnitude of motion that direction, away from the center of my paraboloid here. Looking at another radial vector field, its formula here, negative x comma negative y in 2D space. So now here, everything is actually flowing toward the origin, still a radial vector field though, and if you imagine water flowing inside of this paraboloid where we have a minimum point at the bottom, uh, we would flow very quickly down the sides farther up, and then as we get close to the bottom we would still be flowing toward that central point, right, if we were looking from above, but we would actually be flowing more slowly as we get toward the bottom, so something similar to this pattern as we're all flowing to one point, but as we approach that point we have less magnitude of flow. A little bit different than a radial field, we can also have a field called a rotational field, and that's if all of the vectors in the field are tangent to a circle that is centered at the origin. 
Here I've got my two-dimensional vector field y comma negative x. This is a rotational vector field. You can see here that it is actually a clockwise rotational field. And you'll notice that the magnitudes in this one are changing a bit, right? So as the x and y values are large, then the components are going to be larger. So we'll get a larger magnitude of flow farther out than we will toward the origin here. But all of these vectors, you can imagine if this was a pool of water and I dropped a cork in the water here at this point where this vector is, it's going to float at a certain magnitude and it's going to stay the same distance from the origin. It's not going to get farther or closer. Each of these vectors or a vector at any place, remember you can always find the force or the flow as you think of it. At any point you just plug in the point into the formula for your vector field and that will give you the vector or the force at any point. Think about if I have my vector field y comma negative x and I want to find the force at the point 2 comma 5. So I go over 2 up 5 and I want to know the force of that. Well I simply plug in 2 for x and I plug in 5 for y and if I do that up here then that's going to give me the vector at that point 2 comma 5 is actually 5 comma negative 2. Here's another rotational field. You can tell this one's now going counterclockwise, a similar thing. This one is negative y comma x as the formula for our vector field. This is also a rotational field. So if we ask you again at some point, let's say you want to find the force at 0 comma 4. So what vector will I have? What force will I have at the point 0 comma 4? So plugging in 0 for x up here and plugging in 4 for y up here in our field formula will then give us negative 4 comma 0 as the vector. So that vector would point 4 units straight to the left and would not point vertically at all. So it would be pointing straight to the side. Here's another 2D field. This one is neither rotational nor radial. We have vectors that are actually pointing only in horizontal directions. The formula for this vector field is x comma zero. So you can see that our vertical component for each vector is zero. So we only have horizontal force going on here. The idea is sort of that if I am anywhere on the vertical axis here, I'm not actually going to have any force if I'm right on the axis, because if I'm on this axis, then that means my x value is zero. And so if I plugged in that x value, I would get the vector zero, zero. I wouldn't go anywhere. But as soon as I move just a little bit one way or the other, off to the side of the vertical axis, then I'm going to have a little bit of a horizontal flow to the side, either this way or this way, depending on which side of the axis I'm on. And then as I start to flow away from the axis, you can see that I'm going to flow a greater and greater magnitude as I get farther away from that vertical axis. So you can think of this sort of as maybe we have this sort of parabolic cylinder shape in 3D space. So we have some sort of a ridge on a hill, and as long as I have water that is sitting at the very top of it, then it's not going to run off to one side of the other. But if it's just a little bit off center, then it's going to start to flow, and then as it comes down the hill, it's going to flow more quickly. Looking here at the vector field 0 comma y, so this one has no horizontal component, and it has a vertical component, so a similar thing here. If I have some water that is on the horizontal axis, then that y value at those points is 0, so I would get a vector of 0, 0. So I would have no force if I'm on the horizontal axis, but as soon as I move a little bit above or below that axis, then I start to get some vertical component, and I will begin to flow away from that horizontal axis. So you can imagine a parabolic cylinder running the other direction where we have our horizontal axis here, and if I go just a little bit off the top one direction or the other, then I'm going to start to flow in greater quantity in that direction. Now here's one that looks a bit different and interesting. This is not radial, this is not rotational, and it's not strictly horizontal or vertical. Here our 2D vector field formula is negative x comma y. You can tell that we're sort of moving in toward the vertical axis in quadrants 1 and 2, and also in 3 and 4, but in quadrants 1 and 2 we're moving sort of upward as well, 3 and 4 we're moving downward as well. You could imagine this being a flow pattern on a surface like a saddle, right? Where we have, you know, the center point of the saddle being a max one direction, but it's a min the other direction. So think about if I start at some point here, let's say I'm just below the axis here. So I would start to flow down toward this minimum point in between these two hills, maybe. And then sort of, if I'm a little bit off center, I'm also going to start then flowing down this way as well. So you can think about, I would flow quickly down this way, and then I might slow a bit, and then I might continue to flow more quickly down in this direction. Here, just so we can give you one 3D example, we've got a 3D radial vector field. You can see all of the vectors in this field are actually pointing away from the origin. And the vectors that actually are located 
with their tail end close to the origin have a lot of force to them, and ones further out don't have much force given this formula here. And so you can think about maybe this is some sort of explosive force where things move quickly away from the origin right away, and then as they get further out, then their magnitude decreases. Okay, hopefully this gives you a good introduction to vector fields, how they can model certain types of things, and how we can look at them. We're going to actually start using these in our next video about line integrals. Check us out in that next video. Thanks for watching, everybody.